Welcome to the second video of our foundational training series, where we make an introduction to Larsa 4D for our new users. These foundational learning video series aim to introduce the user interface and the main program components of Larsa 4D. In this tutorial, we will use the Section Composer tool to create different types of sections and import these sections to the main environment of Larsa. Later on, we will dive deeper into the program to create bridge models with complex geometry by defining a bridge path coordinate system. Larsa Section Composer is a graphical tool to create and analyze composite and non-prismatic sections based on standard, parametric, and custom shapes. It is a standalone tool that is included in any Larsa 4D license package. It can be opened using the LPSX file or through the main menu of Larsa, right under the Tools menu. Let us launch the Section Composer to move forward. Upon starting the application, the welcome screen of an empty canvas appears. We can add a shape to the canvas by clicking on Insert Standard Shape or Insert Custom Shape under the Shapes main menu. A list of standard and custom shapes appears. We can display and modify the basic sectional properties of any selected shape before and after importing them to our canvas. At the bottom right, we can see the parameters of the import shape and its point coordinates. On the toolbar, we have a button to show the dimension lines that will help us to see what the parameters refer to. The properties of the section are displayed at the top right, where a little description is presented for each of them. These properties, except the torsion constant, are updated instantly as changes are made to the section. We can calculate the torsion constant by clicking on Calculate Section Properties from the Section menu. Continuing with the stress recovery points, we can display and define the recovery points of the section where the member stresses will be reported at up to six locations on the section after an analysis. We can add any point on the section as a stress recovery point or remove one. Typically, the point numbers are assigned in counterclockwise order. Now, let us take a look at the member reference lines and the local coordinate systems before importing our section to Larsa. The member reference axes are the coordinate system of the canvas that we are working on. The y-axis of the member is the vertical axis, and the z-axis of the member is the horizontal axis. At the intersection of these axes, we have the x-axis that goes into the screen. As we move our shape, we can see that the centroidal and principal axis of the section no longer coincide with the member reference axis. We can always fit our section back to the origin of the reference member axis using the Move Section Centroid to Member Center option from the section menu. To have a better understanding of the member reference axis, let us define another section using the duplicate command. After giving our section some offset in the Y direction using the Align Top option in the toolbar, we are ready to go into Larsa. We can import any kind of database to Larsa from the Input Data menu. Let us assign the section with the offset to a simple two-noded element. As we can see in the graphics view, the start and end joints are located at the top of the section. The member reference line coincides with the line between the member end joints. When the displaying option is chosen as simple rendering, we can see that the member is drawn along the member's centroidal line. Changing the section to our original shape, we can see that the start and end joints are located at the centroid of the section. When the displaying option is chosen as simple rendering, we can see that the member element is drawn along the member reference line. The member reference line tells us how our section is going to get connected to the rest of the geometry of our structure. The idea of the reference line is that we can place the member and joints anywhere in the section. Let's continue discussing the member reference axis using a more grounded example to fully understand the member reference axis and the member and offset concepts of Larsa 4D. That is the case where we are modeling a girder 
using member elements and the deck using plate elements. For the first option, we can locate the joints at the top of the deck. For that case, we will have to position the member reference axis above the top of the section in an amount of the thickness of the deck. Also, we should define the plate end offset to the deck plate element in an amount of half of the thickness of the deck. For the second option, we can put the joints in the middle of the deck elements by positioning the top of the section below the member reference line at a distance of half of the deck thickness. For the third option, we can put the joints at the bottom of the deck by aligning the top of the section to reference axis. Also, we should define the plate and offsets to the deck plate element in an amount of half of the thickness of the deck. Finally, we can put the joints at the centroid of the girder, but in this option, we will have to calculate the deck plate offset from the section centroid manually. An orientation angle has to be set for every two node element. Here we can see how to set the orientation angle through the model data explorer. Let us continue with the composite sections. Apart from the modeling approaches of the girder and the deck that we have just covered, a composite section can also be defined in the section composer tool. We can add another shape to our canvas to create a composite section. After adding a shape, the shapes that comprise the composite section can be located as pleased using the alignment tools that are presented in the toolbox bar. The snap tool can be used to snap the edges of the two shapes together. We can assign different materials to our shapes by clicking on composite materials that's right down the section menu. Upon assigning a different material to one of the shapes and selecting a reference material, the Section Composer tool automatically computes all composite section properties based on the selected reference material. We can define rebars in our section using the Draw Rebars tool. Upon clicking on it, a small window pops up where we can enter input regarding the rebar properties such as its type and material, and geometrical information such as the cover distance. After we hit close, the Section Composer tool will place the rebars according to the information we just provided. This rebar information on the section can be used later by the Larsa 4D moment curvature and by axial interaction analysis tools and our upcoming peer code check tool. Now, let us continue with the non-prismatic sections. The dimensions of a non-prismatic section vary along the length of the member. Non-prismatic sections can be defined in the Section Composer tool by applying formulas to shape parameters. After clicking on our shape on the canvas, we will click on the F button that is right next to the sectional properties to open the parametric equation editor. We have various options to define an equation for the variation of the section, such as custom linear, haunch, parabolic, and sinusoidal. To give a linear variation to our section, we will choose a start and an end depth value. A linear equation along the unit length of the member that satisfies the start and end conditions is then automatically created by the section composer. For an example, let us create a parametric shape of a hammerhead pier cap using non-prismatic variation. We shall define constant numerical values for the top points of the section to make sure that the top of the member will not be affected by the variation. After defining an equation, we can go to the section menu, click on non-prismatic variation to observe the variation of the section in the side view, and look at the sectional parameters at a certain location along with the member. Let us import our non-prismatic section to Larsa. As we can see, the single member element follows the non-prismatic sectional properties that we have just defined. We can observe that upon breaking our elements into multiple segments, the variation will be along with each element separately. We can define a chain of members as span. From Draw menu, Selected Members Span, to specify the start and end of the variation. This way, 
multiple elements will follow the variation. As we can see from the simple rendering graphical view, all member and offsets are calculated automatically when we use the Section Composer tool to define a non-prismatic section. We can also check out the member and sectional properties for each element in Larsa from Results menu, Spreadsheet, Member, Member and Sections. Now, coming back to Larsa, we will talk about the bridge path coordinate systems. Bridge path coordinate systems are special coordinate systems that are generally used to conveniently set up bridge models with complex geometry. Its purpose is to simplify creating curved bridge geometry by working with simple coordinates that can be taken from your 2D plan drawings. It is also helpful when defining support directions and extracting forces in appropriate directions. This is accomplished by warping the x-axis of a coordinate system into a curve that will follow the center line of the bridge. So, instead of the x, y, and z axis, a bridge path coordinate system has a station axis that follows the center line of the bridge, a transverse offset axis that is perpendicular to the center line of the bridge at every point, and an elevation axis that generally matching the global z axis respectively. Let us find the coordinate system from the drop-down menu of the Model Data Explorer and click on the plus button. From the User Coordinate System window, we will choose the type of our new coordinate system as Bridge Path and click on the Edit Path button. We can create a Bridge Path coordinate system using the Bridge Path Editor. When setting up horizontal geometry, we can enter the station and heading angle and select the curve type as the largest. The tool will calculate the largest radius of curvature automatically. We can enter the station and radius of curvature, and the tool calculates the heading angle automatically. And as a third option, we can enter surveyor angles by separating degrees, minutes, and seconds with spaces. We can set up a curved bridge model, or we can convert our already existing straight bridge model into a curved bridge by right-clicking on the bridge path coordinate system and selecting the Convert to this UCS option. Let's not forget to update the direction of the supports. By assigning the bridge path coordinate system as the displacement UCS of our support joints. We can also increase the number of segments of the members to make the girders fit into the bridge alignment more precisely. In Larsa, the generation tools can be used to quickly create new elements by means of extrusion along any given direction with respect to the active coordinate system. We can use this tool from the draw menu, Generation. As we can see, the extruded elements are perpendicular to the bridge path at each station. Finally, we can orient peer members with respect to the bridge path coordinate system easily by right-clicking on the peer and selecting Orient Principal Axis to Joint. We can set up the vertical geometry by defining station, elevation, and grade control points. To model superstructure rotation or super elevation, the angle of banking can be entered into bridge path data. The transverse offset axis is rotated according to the bank rotation angle, but the elevation axis remains vertical. We hope you found this video helpful, and we welcome you to contact us if we can provide further information or assist your project needs.